Hey, what's up guys? My name is Zach and this week I've been driving the 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trailhawk 4xE. Up front is a 2.0 liter turbocharged inline four as well as a plug-in hybrid system and down below is an eight speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be making this video because I have spent the last seven days driving around this Grand Cherokee 4xE and I've actually really enjoyed my experience with it. There are a couple downsides, but we'll talk about that throughout the video. I'll give you a full tour of the 4xE, as well as some thoughts and opinions on what it's like to live with. But if you would like to share your vehicle with me, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com submit. It's a quick and easy submission form, takes under a minute to fill out, and I come out to you. But let's get back to that drivetrain under the hood. Now you might be scoffing a little bit and saying, oh, a four cylinder, turbo grand cherokee that doesn't really work and i'm happy to report that well it does in fact work and that you're wrong but it is paired to the plug-in hybrid system which makes everything so fantastic there is an electric motor on board and so you can drive the grand cherokee 4xe in electric mode you can drive this as an electric vehicle but you don't have to paired to it is the eight speed automatic i do really like it and of course this is four wheel drive this comes with the trailhawk pack package which is like limited slip differential electronic detachable sway bars things like that but i do want to talk about fuel economy which ranges drastically so in the time of driving this i've averaged about 22.2 miles to the gallon however it's going to wildly differ because there's three different drive modes you can drive this in just gasoline mode you could drive it in hybrid mode or you could drive it in just electric mode so if I were to drive the same route three times in the three different modes, I would see wildly different fuel economy numbers. So don't let that number deter you of 22.2 because some of that I've been doing infinite miles per gallon because it was electric. And some of that I've been doing worse miles per gallon because it was all gasoline. So I just wanna get that out there. Don't focus too much on that number because if you do short trips under 30 miles, you can do it in all electric mode, which is fantastic. And honestly, most people commute less than 30 miles to and from work every day, so you could charge it at home and it would be totally fine. Now, there is one issue with charging, and that is the fact that the Grand Cherokee is large. As you can see in this shot, it barely fit in my garage, which is the only location I have an outlet that would be good for charging. So if you do live in a smaller house, apartment, things like that, you might want to look into it. I do not recommend charging one of these off of an extension cord. So just something to note. How does it feel to actually drive the 4xE? It's great. Now it is a larger vehicle and it does have a little bit stiffer suspension because the Trailhawk is that off-road package. But honestly, it's quiet, it's calm, it's collected, steering's been pretty good, visibility's been pretty good, and that's really helped out by the 360 camera that it gets. And overall, I've actually had a really big joy while driving the 4xE. However, with that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a completely digital gauge cluster. I'm a big fan of it. I think it looks nice. It's not too cluttered and I'll cycle through what I can right now. Think it looks good. Think it looks fresh. Think it looks modern. And that's all I can really ask for from a vehicle like this. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my controls for that gauge cluster screen as well as my phone options. And off to the right, I have my adaptive cruise options. I use this on the highway and it did a pretty good job. I was pretty happy with it. The overall steering wheel looks and feels nice. I love that they give you a grip in the center down at the bottom. I like how it says Jeep. I like the blue stitching to remind you that you're in the 4xE. And I do have paddle shifters around the back as well as radio controls around the back. So your left hand will skip track and your right hand will do volume. Off to the left, I do have a climate control vent. And then I have my drive mode select for the powertrain. So this is where you'll find electric, gas, and hybrid. And then of course, my headlight switches, gauge dimmer switches, gas cap release, and my power parking brake. Moving on to the door, we have two different memory seat options, power mirrors along with power folding mirrors, and our power windows, which only the front two are auto, and then we have the power locks. Moving into the center, we have a couple interesting buttons. So off to the left, this blue battery button, this is for the regenerative braking. So this will put it on all the way max to regen as much power as you can. Then we have the lane keep assist on and off, traction control on and off, hazard switch, parking sensors on and 
off. And then our passenger screen button, which we'll talk about in a second. Then we do have the infotainment system. This does have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And we do get some fun options here, like the mirror dimmer, passenger screen on and off, passenger screen power on, forward facing camera, surrounding camera, and rear camera. As well as you can run the climate controls through here. You don't have to, but you can. And here is what the camera system looks like. In case you're curious, I rely on this pretty heavily for driving a vehicle of this stature. And it's been really nice, it's been really clear, and I've really enjoyed using it. However, let's talk about that passenger screen. So the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trailhawk 4xE comes with a screen in front of the passenger. Now it's not quite as many screens as what the Grand Wagoneer gets, which I'll leave a link to a review of one of those at the end of this video, but they can select music, they can suggest navigation points and actually send it to the driver's navigation. And it'll say, would you like to navigate here? And you could select yes or no. But hands down, the coolest and the most fun feature has been that the passenger can view the cameras while you are driving, which is absolutely a blast when you're the passenger. You can kind of keep an eye on things and feels like you're doing something. But also, the passenger can wash the front camera. So the camera system at the front has a washing system to get dust and grime away from it, which is super smart for an off-road vehicle. But the passenger gets to decide when to do that, and my girlfriend has loved playing with that. I'll just be driving down the road, and I'll see a mist coming from the front end of my car, and I'll look over, and she's spamming the button to clean the camera. It's a very fun gimmick, although it is just a gimmick, but I love it, and I had to mention it. Moving back into the center, we do have our climate control and we do have physical climate controls. This was always one of my biggest issues with Chrysler Jeep Dodge products was the lack of physical controls and the Grand Cherokee 4xE has them, which is fantastic. I love it. If you have gloves on, if you're working outside, you're gonna be able to hit all this stuff because the touch screens aren't really responsive when you have gloves on. So really, really smart thinking here from Jeep. Moving into this openable center console, we have two USB-Cs, two USB-As, an aux, an HDMI, and a 12 volt outlet if you can't plug your device into here it might not be from this country or planet we also have a wireless charger if that wasn't enough for you so love all those features moving around the shifter we do have the rotary dial shifter in the center i don't mind it it does the job but off to the left we have different drive modes so we have rock sand mud snow auto and sport which is really really cool and you can utilize those at your leisure but then off to the right we have our height adjustment. So this is outfitted with air suspension from the factory and you can raise or lower it when you want. With a caveat, sometimes the car will deny you a suspension option if you're going too fast and or if you're going too slow or if it's not the right conditions, whatever it might be. It can actually deny you if it wants to. However, here's a clip of the air suspension at work. I think it looks really cool and it does get a pretty decent amount of height under there, which is always fun to watch on video. We also have buttons for the four wheel drive low. Our button for select speed, which is for four wheel drive, this sort of modulates the throttle when you're trying to do more technical off-roading. And then off to the right, we have our sway bar disconnect and reconnect button. Then we do have cup holders, so we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the 4xE Grand Cherokee, and unfortunately it fails. I was hopeful, but alas, it's still a fail. <laughs> Then we do have a center console. You can open up the top little portion or the larger bottom portion of which it has nothing in there, not even an outlet, but that was all covered up at the top. The seats are very comfortable. They are power, heated, memory, and ventilated. So anything you can want out of a modern seat, the 4xE is going to be able to accomplish. However, speaking of seats, we do have another row of seating. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee trailhawk 4 by e quite the little mouthful but sitting here knees good headrooms good it's going to be a comfortable back seat however the seats themselves are kind of hard they're not very cushiony and my thought process is that the battery pack is probably under these seats 
That's where it was in the 4xe Wrangler. And so they try to put the battery pack up high to keep it out of the way for off-roading so you don't pierce it on a stump or something like that. I don't have hard evidence that this is where the battery pack is. That's just my educated guess. But that would be why these seats are a little hard. I do have a center console right here. I do have climate control vents in the back. Love seeing that. As well as two USB-C, two USB-A, a standard wall outlet, and heated seats, so plenty of great options in the back seats for the 4xe Grand Cherokee. And something to note, I don't really know when to put this into the video, so I'm gonna do it now. On the rear passenger window, there's actually an evolution of the Grand Cherokee in silhouettes. I love, love, love that Stellantis really pays tribute to their older models in a lot of their cars. The Pacifica had the line of old town and country minivans. I believe the Ram, I haven't driven a modern Ram in a couple years or year or something. I believe that they have the lineage of the trucks and now the Jeep Grand Cherokee has the lineage of the Grand Cherokees. I love that touch, but as someone that loves cars and loves the history of cars, that is super exciting and just such a little thing that really means a lot to me, I guess. So anyway, speaking of this back area, let's hop out. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, I apologize. It's a little bit windy here today, but we do have two buttons here on the key fob, and it is a power opening tailgate. Once we are back here, there's nothing crazy to write home about immediately, although I do have a 12 volt outlet right there. And that is the lineage of the Grand Cherokee that I mentioned with the back seat review. I do have some hooks, I have room for a privacy cover, although I don't currently have one. But by far the coolest thing that I have found in the back of the Grand Cherokee is when you pull this up, I don't drop my camera. When you pull this up, you do get a spare tire. That's actually, you know what? That actually is a nice feature these days, but actually over here, you see this L-shaped bag? This is for the charger. Let me show you. So it's hard to hold up the top um, and unzip it, but when you unzip it, this is the charger and this whole bag actually comes out, but it is purposefully made to fit right here in the corner. This makes me jealous for every other car company that doesn't do this because this is such a smart idea. It's such smart packaging for Jeep. And like the Volvo plug-in hybrid that I had did not have this. So this is definitely very, very cool. Very smart packaging from Jeep. And I love the fact that they did that. But anyway, that is the rear cargo space of the Grand Cherokee 4xe. I don't like that the button's on the inside and not on the tailgate itself. I would have loved if it was right here, but they kept it here back up and let it do its thing. It does close a little bit slower because of that, so it gives you time to get out of the way, so just something of note. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and I don't know, I really like the graphics on here, the white with the blue accents. I think the blue accents really make a bigger difference here on the Grand Cherokee as opposed to the 4xe Wrangler that I filmed last year, and I'll leave a link to that video as well at the end. But overall, I think it is a really cohesive and really good looking SUV. But with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think, having driven the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trailhawk 4xe for the last seven days? Well, I actually really liked it. And I liked it a lot more than I genuinely thought I was going to. I've never been a big Jeep guy. I've never disliked Jeeps, but I've also never like really loved Jeeps. I've never been, you know, really into it. And so I went into this review in this week with somewhat low expectations. I thought, okay, plug-in hybrid should be interesting. Should be at least pretty comfortable. Modern Jeeps, especially the Wagoneer that I drove has been very luxurious. So I was looking forward to it. And to be fair, I actually had ridden in this press car before about a couple months back in late April. April because my friend and mentor Robbie DeGraff had it. So I've actually ridden in this before I ever drove it, which is contrary to what most reviews are like for me. But anyway, I loved it. R really the only downside I found with this is A, fitting it in the garage was kind of a hassle and you definitely want a 220 outlet if you are planning on charging it. A full charge on a regular wall outlet will take about 16 hours and that isn't really great. So I would highly recommend getting a charger installed. Make it super easy. You'll charge it up in about six hours, be good to go, and have those 30 miles of range. I plugged it in at seven this morning, unplugged it at around 1 p.m., and I only had about 
eight or nine miles of range. So not super fun. The other thing is, of course, the price tag. I'm not going to harp on it because car prices are always going to go up. And if you look 30 years ago, a $15,000 car was incredibly expensive. So what I really enjoyed in here was two things. First of all, the interior. It's been very luxurious, very comfortable. The Alpine sound system is fantastic. One of the best that I've driven. The seats have been comfortable. It's spacious enough for me and my girlfriend. We went out and got dinner. We went to the movies. It was good. It was comfortable. We fit friends in here and it was great. The other thing has been the drivability. I like driving in electric mode, it's silent. Every time I showed it to someone, they're like, wow, that's so quiet. And the crossover between gas and electric is nearly seamless, which I also praised the 4xe Wrangler for. I do wanna get that out there. The 4xe Wrangler has the same drivetrain, or at least the same power unit with the two liter turbo and hybrid. It switched over nearly flawlessly as well. So that continues here with the Grand Cherokee. And I was excited to see that, but it just all makes sense. This vehicle makes a lot of sense because if I'm just gonna pop around town, I'm just going to use electricity and that's fantastic it's going to be no emissions i'm not going to have to stop at the gas station and i'm going to do my job in a very quiet manner but then say at a drop of a hat someone calls me they're like hey i got a flat tire in eastern missouri i don't have to go oh well you know hold on let me find the chargers that let me you know i need to make sure that i have enough battery to get none of that. I can hop in the car as long as I have a full tank of gas. And when I run out of electricity, it's no big deal. I just keep going. That's the lovely part of the 4xe and just plug-in hybrids in general. I personally believe that plug-in hybrids are the future. We're going to cut down on our fuel consumption without depending solely on the power grid. It's better to feed from two different directions rather than rely on one. And so that's why this Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xe is so fantastic. It's pricey and it's big, but it's fantastic. And I highly recommend if you are looking for a new family SUV, that you put this down on your list because I think it is really something special. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Jeep for sending me this vehicle for the last week, as well as G Schmidt for organizing the delivery and cleaning of this vehicle. And of course the Midwestern Automotive Media Association for just being so doggone good. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video and subscribe. Take care, guys.